so welcome to today's class today we will be starting with your new topic which is uh, color image processing so till now we have seen various concepts of your image processing like uh, we have dealt with all your black and white images and uh, gray scale images moving forward today we will try to dig up upon the very next topic which is a very important topic which is nothing but your color image processing so very important thing in your color image processing is um, uh, the black and white and gray scale had only one plane that is you would dealt with only one plane of pixels but uh, when you come to your uh, uh, color images you have to deal with three planes that is the color image will be having three different planes so what are those three different planes how to deal with them and all those things we'll be seeing in upcoming classes so friends we'll start with your color image processing so moving ahead what actually is a color now color is nothing but uh, it is one of the descriptor which the object would identify and extract from a scene like say for example i have a scene wherein i have some five to six items of different colors then which color you would pursue which color your eye would pursue then that color would be identified so whenever i say color image processing it is broadly categorized into two areas one is full color processing and another one is pseudo color processing so in the first category it consists of all the images wherein we have a full color sensor like say for example a color tv camera so whenever i speak of full color you can just assume a color tv camera and in the second category it comes your the second category is nothing but your pseudo color processing wherein you would be dealing about your various monochromatic intensities and it would range from various intensities like say for example from uh, uh, 300 nanometer to 1500 nanometer now going ahead we might have seen various things like in the previous uh, past 10 years uh, you might have observed very carefully that uh, the image processing techniques have widely improved to say for example earlier we were not having uh, digital cameras like say for example if you go back some 10 years or 20 years you can notice that uh, we were having the roll cameras but when we sp speak of today we have our digital cameras okay so and another major thing was if you go back some 5 years or 6 years or some 10 years the cost of the digital camera was very high but when we speak of today the cost has been drastically reduced the reason behind this is because the hardware which was used to do all those uh, cameras has drastically reduced so that means the hardware which was used to uh, perceive a color and uh, which was used to process a color image all those things have been reduced the prices of all those things have been reduced okay now uh, if i see the if you see the present slide here whichever i am showing now you might have seen this earlier as well this was the famous uh, prism experiment which was done by sir isaac newton in 1966 sorry in 1666 and uh, what does this pr uh, famous prism experiment told us what uh, sir isaac newton did was he passed a white light into a prism and when he saw at the outset of the prism he came across different colors and which would range from say uh, infrared band to an ultraviolet band so what was happening here is it consisted of uh, various broad regions like say for example violet blue green yellow orange and red and when we used to view this full color Uh, we find out one major thing was no color was ending abruptly that uh, that is i mean to say if i have a yellow and if, uh, the next color if i have a orange then we usually find that it is continuous there is no gap between a yellow color and a orange color so why this was happening this was happening because it is uh, usually the reason behind this is uh, how a color is uh, emitted that is how a color is pursued a color is nothing but it is pursued with the help of a what your body reflects like say for example i have a visible spectrum which would range from 500 to 570 nanometers okay so what we are speaking about was how the body would reflect a particular image or a particular color so it is completely based on 
what your body is reflecting that is say for example if uh, you are seeing a red color it means that the body has reflected only red color and rest all colors have been absorbed so therefore you are only seeing the red color okay so to move ahead this is the famous wavelength band which you have seen many times as well you can see here it starts from your gamma rays and ranges up to your radio waves and the wavelength it would take is somewhere around it starts from 300 nanometers up to 1500 nanometers okay so when we speak of uh, this uh, whole band we can we cannot see the whole uh, uh, rays like say for example our normal eye cannot see a gamma ray or cannot see a radio wave or it cannot see an x ray so you can see here uh, specifically that the visible spectrum is only from 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers okay so this is very important friends like uh, what all is visible and how it is characterized then it is characterized based on your intensity that is what is the amount that can be seen so say for example i have a chromatic light a chromatic light then you can say that a chromatic light is what the viewer sees on a black and white television set say for example you have a black and white television set whatever you see is nothing but your it is a, a chromatic light okay and similarly you have a chromatic light how we have a achromatic light we have a chromatic light and it range spans somewhere around 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers usually our light has various characteristics when you speak of chromatic light a chromatic light is a black and white so we would not uh, worry much about that but a chromatic light has major three quantities which are called as radiance luminance and brightness okay so we'll try to understand what is this radiance luminance and brightness so the radiance is nothing but it is the amount of energy which flows from a light source and it is usually measured in the watts it means that what is the amount of energy your source is throwing outside that is nothing but your radiance coming to luminance luminance deals with your opposite side that is the receiver side so and the receiver side what is the amount of energy the receiver takes from the source is nothing but your luminance so friends radiance is nothing but from the source the amount of light the source is throwing outside luminance is nothing but from the receiver that is the amount of light which is the receiver is taking inside so to give an example so say for example a light is emitted from a source which is being operated in an infrared region and it has a significant energy the energy in here is nothing but your radiance but the observer cannot see an infrared light right we if any light is thrown on the if anything is there on the infrared our normal eyes cannot see it in that case the luminance is zero so i hope you understood it if uh, uh, the infrared source is throwing light with with full its capacity but at the receiver end we cannot see anything so therefore we say that luminance is zero whereas radiance is maximum finally the next thing we have is brightness so brightness is one such thing which is very difficult to uh, measure practically so it is uh, one of the key factors when we want to describe the color sensation so we'll go ahead and describe brightness we'll try to describe brightness in the later classes okay now going to the next slide here one very important thing is uh, say for example if you have a digital camera with you you might have seen that it has some light sensors so like say for example if you are shooting in a, a, a low light area you would be using your flash similarly with our eyes as well we have the sensors so these sensors are nothing but your cones so these cones are responsible for what is the color you can see okay friends now say for example i have a, a, a our eyes there it is uh, you might have already heard many a times that the colors are basically made up of only three major colors which are nothing but your red green and blue so we say that the principal sensing category is roughly defined to only red green and blue that is say for example our sensors that is sensors of the eyes which we call as cones 
65 percent of the cones are sensitive sensitive to only red light that is they can only sense the red light whereas the 33 percent can sense only the green light the rest of the two percent are will be able to sense only blue light so therefore you can see that uh, the various cones or the various sensors which are available in your eye in our eyes are basically red cones red sensors but to mention here a small point the blue cones even though they are very less but they are very sensitive that is even though there is a small uh, blue color the, they would be sensing it very easily now to move ahead if you see the below figure it shows an experimental curve wherein it would tell you where the absorption of light would occur by the red green and blue cones in our eye so you can observe here the red is getting observed from 450 nanometers to 700 nanometers whereas the green is getting observed from 400 nanometers to somewhere around 675 nanometers similarly the blue is getting absorbed up till 550 nanometers so friends uh, this is the range wherein our light would get absorbed by the eye the red light is getting absorbed in this wavelength range okay now one very important thing here is as we observe in the below figures we, we say that no single color may be called red green or blue why you can observe all are intersections red is intersection of green green is intersection of blue red is also an intersection of blue as well both green and blue so therefore we say that by, when we see these diagrams that we cannot clearly tell which is which is red color which is green color and which is a blue color it comes as a mixture okay now another very important thing here is uh, all the three specific primary color wavelengths are used for standard standardization and they are not used for any spectrum colors now one more very important thing is we usually say this rgb as primary colors and we have a, a misconception that uh, when we mix these three colors we get n number of other colors that is true to some extent but along with mixing of these three colors it is one more very important thing we need to do is we also need to vary the wavelengths so if you vary the wavelengths then we will be able to obtain n number of colors another major thing we would be doing is negation if you do the negation as well then we will be getting n number of different colors okay so friends the next very important thing we will be seeing is about your how to get the mixture of light so this diagram i'll be covering in the next class uh, till then have a look at this class and let me know if you have any doubts thank you for watching we'll again meet in the next lecture or next video okay thank you